good afternoon. Welcome to episode 720. And the topic today is about listening. So if you want to learn to listen, listen up. <laughs> um, the official title to today's episode, 720, is uh, Better Communication. I'll explain that in a moment too. Um, the Art of Listening, Really Listening. So I'll get into that in a moment. Before I do that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and what I'm about, and then we'll get right into it. So bear with me for, bear with me for a few seconds. My name is Barry Selby, in case you hadn't seen my broadcast before and you haven't actually looked around this broadcast to see who it is about and talking. I am a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. That's also why I inspired these talks in the first place over two years ago called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring Feminine Heart. So today and now we're at episode number 720. Yeah, I've got a few of these done now. And this is actually part two of a so far two-part series called Better Communication. Yesterday was talking about asking for what you want. Today is about listening. And to um, make it really clear, I'm going to talk about listening in more than one way. So let's just get into it. 99.9% um, .9 of people I'm aware of, <laughs> that's a very personalized statement, don't know how to listen. In fact, when they're in conversation, dialogue, shall we speak, with somebody else, nine times out of 10, and again, I'm using random numbers here because I don't know exactly the numbers, I've not done pure research, but I would guess you know some people, if not yourself, who do this, is that when they're listening to somebody talk to them, they're already formulating a response, or they're thinking about something else, or they're judging the person speaking to them, or one of 17 other things they're doing that isn't listening. I'm guilty of this too, so I'm just going to out myself right here. I have definitely um, misheard things, I'll put it that way. And sometimes I've actually been, up, have been willing and I've been vulnerable enough to say to somebody, um, I apologize, I got distracted by something in my own thinking. Would you mind repeating yourself so I can hear what you were saying? Which is a good way to get cleaned up, by the way. I'll get to those in a minute. The challenge we have I should say the challenge that's there is that for most people, again, that nine out of 10 or 99.9% .9 of people, yeah, is the focus upon wanting, first of all, to not feel embarrassed. Yes, embarrassment. There's a thing that people do in conversation is they don't wanna have a lingering gap between when somebody finishes talking and they respond. And so the fear is that if, for example, let me, let me, let me put the other side on first. What if instead of responding as soon as they talk, or as respond, sorry, planning a response whilst they're talking, you actually just stopped and listened completely with nothing else going on. You simply were present to what they were saying and you didn't actually say anything or think of anything until they stopped speaking. That's pure listening, that's real listening. We're actually taking in everything they're telling you. Oh, there's another piece. Okay, they'll come in a bit later. The challenge with this is when you do finish, so when they do, when they finish talking, you then have to consider what you want to say as a response. And that can look kind of odd, we believe, because we don't have an immediate answer to come back to what somebody said. We're actually going to take a couple of moments to gather our thoughts and then come back and respond. Now, if you're in conversation with, some, conversation with somebody you know and you've had this, this um, established understanding going on, it's not a problem. But with somebody you haven't seen for a while or somebody you don't do this with or a stranger, when they finish talking, they're expecting you to respond almost immediately, which is really the wrong thing to do. Because again, the only way to be ready to respond to them what they're saying right at the top, right at the top, is to have prepared your response before you've even finished talking. So you haven't actually heard everything they've said because you've been thinking to yourself, what do you need to say to respond to what they've said before they actually finish the communication? So you haven't listened to everything they said. This is one of those traps. So if you choose to do this idea of listening without any thinking, agenda, planning, or anything else until they're finished, then you need some time to gather your thoughts to respond to what they're saying. It can be as simple as saying like, hang on a second, I'm just trying to compose my, my, my thoughts. You can say something as simple as that as a placeholder to let them know that you're thinking and considering with some real intention with what they said to respond to what they're saying. And a couple of things I'll throw in there as well. The thing what, that happens when you really do listen without any pre-planned response, things going on inside, 
is you get to observe more than just what they're saying. You get to listen to how they're actually communicating to you energetically as well as physically. What I mean is that you'll feel things from them. Maybe you'll notice the tenseness in their shoulders or the tilt of their head or the way their eyes squint or look distracted when they're talking, like they're trying to recall something or they're worried about something. There's so many things that we can pick up on other people when we're in conversation, or I should say when we're listening to them, but we ignore a lot of that, or I should say we um, gloss over those things because we're too busy looking at our own response. Two things I want to say about that response piece. I should say two things to let go of. One is let go of trying to be right, because that's a big one. And two is let go of trying to be perfect, because both of those things are what a lot of us are doing including myself, when we are composing our response before they finish talking. We want to say the right answer and be perfect with it. Wouldn't it be better to be honest, to communicate clearly, to be effective? The thing with giving people response to their communication once it's been fully heard is it transforms the quality of the communication. It's almost like it drops it to a much deeper level of connection, communication and intimacy when you truly hear what that person is saying. Again, nine, ten people out of ten, nine, nine, nine point nine percent of people tend to miss that. They, they, those other people, not you or me, because we know better, of course, have no inkling, no clue, no understanding of just how rich communication, dialogue, and conversation can be when listening is fully embraced and brought into this um, place of understanding. Because being being in a fully listening space is to be fully receptive to everything the other person's bringing. I should have said this earlier, but now it's coming up now. So a lot of what I talk about in conversation is the, really the ability to be in dialogue where you are being fully heard, fully received, and you're able to fully express and give from the same place too. There's a gift on both sides of this. When somebody shares himself with you, you fully receive them so you get to really know what they're all about. On the other part is they feel fully given and fully able to share and be um, expressed because the other part of this, which we don't do what I suggest, which is fully listening and embracing and allowing what they're saying to come into you, by preparing what you want to say, you're actually cutting them off. And this cutting off, this, this um, abruptness is a very, um, I would say dysfunctional, but a very unhealthy way to do to be. I know. Okay, I'm going to talk about this. <laughs> I know part of my own upbringing challenges of communication was, and people still know me as I do speak pretty quickly. Not as bad as I used to be, but I do speak fairly quickly still. One of the reasons why I speak spoke more quickly before is because when I was a child, I didn't. Well, one, I didn't get feel received in my conversations, and two. Because I was in in my teenage years, I talked about this before. I was bullied in my teenage years, teenage years at school, and so in conversation, I was so scared of getting smacked that I would say what I wanted to say as quickly as I could and get out. Now, I, it didn't matter; nobody would hear it. It was almost like I just needed to put my opinion out and then run away. So, for me, having the place where I could give a full expression of what I wanted to say and be received was nowhere on my radar. In fact, it was almost it was an impossibility for me. And because of the fact that I was so worried about being beaten up or hurt or, or, or um, ridiculed, I would, ex I would speak so quickly that nobody would understand me anyway. And unfortunately, that became entrained into my default way of speaking for a long time. And it's, and it's been a long journey to get to this point where I could slow down, partly because I had to really get down to the bottom of what that belief was. And that's a whole other thing about my work, about getting down to the old beliefs and the programming that was in there. But secondly, to really trust what I had to say was valid. In fact, in some ways, this whole journey of over two years of Facebook Lives has been part of my exposure of my truth in a way that I trust and was willing to give to the world without any filter or um, need, desire to be received. It was like, I need to put it out there and get it out because I need to just vent it for myself. So these Facebook Lives have been part of that process for me to become more willing to express my truth. So what's it got to do with listening, you may be wondering. Many of us carry around wounds from our own uh, childhood about 
communication. Either we were told to shut up and be quiet, which a lot of kids had that dealt with, or you were ridiculed, which is one thing I went through, or you weren't taken seriously, or any number of things that maybe you found or experienced or thought happened to you as a kid that have influenced the ability for you to communicate and to listen. Maybe you were in a place also where you hated being told what to do, so you never listened to anybody. So your ability to listen by default was turned off. And as an adult, you may have forgotten it's still running that way. So that so I'm giving you a lot, lot more. Um, what's I'm looking for? Side roads, maybe, or offshoots, or um, tributaries, <laughs> as the main focus has been about listening. But also, some of us have challenges listening or even speaking because things happened when we were younger. So, what I'm inviting you to do is to consider for yourself how well do you listen, and how clearly do you communicate yourself. I'm mean, also dropping both sides of the conversation. So you can be really clear in your own, well, first of all, clear about your own history to see, okay, am I really trusting that what I'm saying is being heard? And am I really trusting that what I'm hearing is what's being said? Two-way street. If you find yourself having challenges in this area, it might be because you've got some childhood beliefs still running inside. And if you watch my broadcast, you know I talk about this quite a bit that influences your ability to listen and to speak. If that's the case, you may want to do some self-investigation or get some help, like by yourself, to get some clarity on this. So you can shift your own communication skills so you can be a much more effective listener and a much more effective speaker. I just realized I covered quite a gamut there. Let me come back to the beginning part again. There really is a depth and profundity Profundity, yes, I say profundity <laughs> in a communication to go back and forward to actually have de deep intimacy and, yes, intimacy in communication and sensuality in the ability to communicate clearly with somebody else. When you choose to have conversations like that, amazing transformations happen, amazing uh, openings of love happening happen, and amazing understanding happens too between two people. Unfortunately, that 99.9% .9 of people, the 9 out of 10 people, as I mentioned, keep using this from the beginning of the talk, just using it, don't have that understanding. And really, conversation is, is underrated, not overrated, underrated. And the ability to communicate clearly and to listen clearly, which is the topic of this talk, is far from being fulfilled. So my invitation with this talk is to consider, consider for yourself where you are able to be more effective in your listening and your communication. Do you find yourself looking impatient? Ah, here we go. <laughs> Do you find yourself impatient to respond to somebody when they're talking to you? If you're doing that, you're cutting them off. Do your best to actually hold yourself back and listen fully and then let yourself think a response. Because the thing is, if you are looking to respond that quickly, either you don't like that person, which is one option, or there's a part of you, again, attached to being right or being perfect, so you won't allow them to speak fully, because you want to have the answer that's so perfect and so right that they'll they will love you and, and worship you and applaud you. Got one of those going on? It's one of those traps that we fall into. It's part of the psychologic, psychology of our desire to be loved and liked, where sometimes we use communication in a very negative way, to get what we think we want, but it's not the right thing in the first place. That's messed up, I know. So, being a willing listener without agenda, without reactivity, without need to immediately respond is a powerful place to be. Because the thing about it is, when you do listen fully, when you do listen without agenda, when you do listen without answering right away, when you do listen as a listener to the person fully, you may just change the other person's life. And by being in that place of listening, it makes you a much more humane human being, a much more compassionate, caring person, and it makes you more powerful than just trying to attempt to hold on to an egoic control by saying the answer right away. Taking the time to listen fully, embracing your own Willingness to listen is a huge step up for a lot of people. Maybe you want to try it sometime. Oh, there's 
Okay, change direction slightly. Still on the listening thing, I was going to mention this earlier. Another part of listening, <laughs> this could be a whole other topic, but I'll start it here for the first, in the first place. Another part of listening is not listening out there, it's listening in here. For a lot of people, they don't listen internally. And I did a talk about this last week, I think, on a similar thing about that, in, that still small voice inside. This is a part of that too. You're listening, when you do listen more fully to other people, when you listen to other people more um, openly, we're also, also opening you up to listen to more, listen internally to more intuitive voices inside. Yes, we all have those voices. You're not, you're not alone and you're not crazy. Well, you might be crazy. But having the, having the place to listen to the voice inside gives you more freedom to choose a more powerful and responsive place to live life. This is something that I've found for myself has changed my life because I've now, in my meditations, in even when I'm taking a bike ride or going or, or taking a shower sometimes, I get these downloads that come in because I'm now available to hear that more clearly. So the more you take, cho cho more you take the, make the choice to consciously listen externally, will open up the space for you to actually more powerfully and easily listen consciously internally. I took that more in another broadcast, so I'm just going to keep this short in this one. But I wanted to give you this two-part key answer solution to help you get more of an understanding of how listening can be a powerful, useful tool in your tool belt that you may not have realized you've not been using very well. So learn how to listen. Practice listening without agenda. Practice listening without responding to really see how powerful being a listener can be. All right, I think that's given you enough to play with. Um, this is a deeper topic, I know, and I wanted to play it out there because I was doing this thing about, as I said yesterday, it was about um, better communication was what I was calling it. This is another part. I'm not sure if you want tomorrow. Can't promise. I'll see what happens tomorrow. These are never usually scripted. I have to have this one already in the in the hopper when I was talking about yesterday's broadcast. So speaking of which, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Sorby. I also do this on my, I also put the replays onto my business page on Facebook, which is barrysorby.author, and on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Sorby. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And the playlist on there is called Messages from the Masculine. So I do that every day. So tomorrow will be 721. It may be another conscious or a better communication skill talk. We'll see. Um, oh, yes. Homework. You've, I've given you homework. I've given you suggestions in this broadcast, so hopefully you'll take this to heart. If you want to get some more support, you want to get some more help, I'll put a contact form link in the comments. You can reach out to me and ask for help direct, that way directly. Um, I'm not going to promote, not, yeah, not going to promote anything else. That seems to be it. So listen, clear, listen clearly, listen carefully, listen fully, listen openly. Learn how to listen like you've never listened before and watch your life transform. And certainly watch your relationships and conversations transform. If you do this with your, your intimate partners, with your intimate partner or with family members, you may be amazed at how your relationships will transform and up level like you've never seen before. This is very simple, but the power is, is immense. Now you've got something to play with. I thank you for watching my broadcast. I'll be back in tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. If you have any questions, thoughts, comments, please put them below and respond when I sign off. And again, if you want any help, I'll leave a link for a contact form in the comments. You can reach out to me for more discovery, help, and guidance. Um, that's it. Thank you for being with me. I will see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.